take a little tour of my painting. This one just uh, caught my eye a couple years ago, and I wanted to really try to capture the detail of all the different types of plants, like the elephant ears over here, the way the sun comes down through the oak trees. There's actually a couple of condos in the background that I eliminated from it because I just wanted to focus on the plants. The style of my painting goes back and forth. Actually quite a range of uh, styles. This is when, this was painted about 10 years ago when I first moved into the house. Trying to capture that reflection with the, uh, with the gray colors in the interior of the house where the sun's not shining and then you look outside and it's the cleaner colors, usually a, a strong color mixed with white outside that really lets you kind of know that that's where the sun is shining outside. It's not only that it's lighter, but it's also uh, got uh, a pure, more pure color in it. it. Moves away from the gray. And this one uh, over here is also the Society of the Four Arts. This was before they refurbished their garden out on Palm Beach. And uh, I'm kind of glad I captured it the way it was because I kind of like the older garden. It's uh, The trees were more mature and it's beautiful now, but it was also beautiful then with the pedestals with the different statues around us. Back in 2007, the Palm Beach Post sent me over to the Bahamas to uh, basically wander around Nassau, Bahama for a few days. Uh, <clears throat> I did a couple uh, oil paintings when I was over there and several watercolor paintings. This is one of the oils of one of the historic uh, buildings. This was the jail back in I don't know, probably a couple hundred years ago it was the jail, but now it's the public library. E either through my own vision or just the way the skies look, oftentimes there's a variation in the color and it seems to have rhythms to it. And so I started putting the rhythmic brush strokes in the sky. And also from a painter's standpoint, it's just, it feels good and it gives action to the painting. Here's a painting that I did several years back. Similar to the skies that I do uh, most of the time where it's just kind of this staccato series of brush strokes. I decided to kind of try to do that throughout the whole painting. And this is one of a creek in Florida over near Sarasota. And I just loved how the reflection in this situation was almost as intense as reality. The two ended up blurring into each other. And then I didn't want the reflection to be exactly perfect to what it was reflecting. So there is some variation there. It was a little bit darker. So a lot of it's observation of the situation. So mainly just uh, accentuating the staccato brush strokes in this one. Yeah, I wanted to take the impressionist feel of most of my paintings and take it as far as I could into the abstract realm without getting totally away from reality. And this one actually uh, in 2010 was in the Palm Beach State College exhibition. I also like to do these, I come up with these ideas and uh, put them down in paint. And they're conceptual paintings, but I use a lot of what I've learned uh, from painting outdoors. And so this is a painting that I just finished recently that I'm working on a series of conceptual paintings. And this one, it's the title of it is Thinking Outside the Box. So there's a number of different things going on. The, the most prominent thing is that the painting's on the outside of the frame. And you can see the hanging wire on the inside. And I put a light switch on the wall just to reinforce that. And then also, <clears throat> I wanted to get a box in the painting itself. And the person sitting on the box, which happens to be me, is uh, he's in the sort of in the same sitting position as the thinker by Rodin. The lighting and the shadows are very nice in it too. Brian. Yeah, I wanted to uh, try to emulate that feeling you get in the museums of the uh, spotlights. Here's one of the more recent plein air paintings that I worked on down at the uh, Boynton Inlet and with my friend Ralph Papa. We were both working out there, and uh, this was actually the second. Uh, I did two paintings that day. It was a good day for staying loose with the paint, and uh, 
getting a real good feel for the stormy clouds that were coming over at the time. Yeah, the Boynton Inlet is uh, one of my favorite places to paint, and this was a good opportunity painting with Brennan here. We're out on the South Pier. Uh, actually, uh, we were on the North Pier. North Pier? We were on the North yeah. Pier, so there's another pier. They just opened it us. up. Yeah. And the uh, intracoastal that connects to the ocean here is very, very fast and furious. And this day was no different. You can see the water churning like it's churning in pools. And Brennan, I'll have another painting I'll share with you where you can see that. But here we're looking out from, you know, maybe um, you know, 40 or 50 yards out from the shoreline, looking in at the coast and, and at uh, the Boynton Inlet, just south of the Boynton Inlet, you've got these rock jetties that are placed here, which is very unique to the southeast uh, coast of Florida. Yes. And you've got a lifeguard tower from the town beach here, and then you've got some of the skyscrapers. But what's beautiful about the Boynton Inlet Park is there's so much to see there, right? I mean, you've got the intracoastal side, you've got the ocean side, you've got people fishing, you've got the boats passing by, you've got turbulent waters, you've got yeah, skies. Every time of day, every time of year, there's always something worth painting yeah. at the Boynton Inlet. You captured it and beautifully. With this one, I was really trying to get the... Uh, the feeling of the clouds that day. There was a little bit of blue sky popping through. It was kind of, there was some storms off in the distance and these clouds were kind of coming off of that. I just wanted to capture the real, instead of my usual staccato brush strokes, they, it kind of lent itself to a more uh, nuanced approach to the clouds. And as Brennan was painting this, now he finished two paintings in this short period. This might have been around 11 or 11.30 in the morning that he was wrapping up this second one. And as you looked out to the ocean at this time, you can see the thunderstorms pooling up on the uh, horizon of the, uh, where I was finished. And in my painting, I have the view looking out of the ocean with another artist painting and the thunderstorms out at sea. You know? yes. So it's really a very memorable day. And that's the one thing that's really beautiful about plein air painting is you walk away Whenever you look at this painting again, you've got the reliving the day, the memory, and everything about it. Fascinating. And you get to go out with friends and learn from other people painting. The only thing we were missing was the wine. Let me, let me go get the other painting. Okay, we, great. Uh, this was the first, right? Yes, that's right. You know, this was looking out into the ocean at those storm clouds off in the distance. And Everybody goes out there and fishes in the morning, so I wanted to capture some of the fishermen, and then there was a lot of fishing boats, you know, both uh, commercial fishermen and private boats, just sitting right at the inlet. It's very turbulent. Yeah, you can see that in, in the waters here. It just look, almost looks like a whirlpool. This is, this is considered the most um, difficult inlet to navigate through. It's got a very low bridge where you can only get out to the ocean at certain times of day if you have a high mast. So coming back, that could be difficult. If you can't get yeah. back in and you're running out of gas, you could be shipwrecked. Brennan, you caught the light on these boats just right, just the lighting up like little neons out here, you know, off the reflection of that turquoise water. And that's what I love about it. And carrying the, the pinks in from the sky into the accent of the highlights on the water. Just uh, well done. Yeah, I, I like to go with a, a complementary color as the, oftentimes I should say I like to go with a complementary color as the base and I just uh, do the whole canvas with that and uh, it kind of gives you opportunity to prepare for the rest of the painting. And then like in this one, the, the under painting is orangish red and I knew I'd be working with greens and blues that day. So, and I wanted that those little tiny specks of orange to pop through in the end, because it makes the paintings more interesting. We just have to know when to stop, when it's right, and just leave it, you know? And that's one of the things that uh, Brennan did here beautifully. And then he started the painting, which we just saw right after that. I had an extra canvas, so I gave it to him. I said, don't waste time, get him another one while the is still wet. That's right. And we did, uh, it was a fun day, and uh, it was a great painting with a uh, friend.